1989. Holy Toledo, we made it to the last timeline video of the 1980s. Oh my God, this can't be happening to me. While there were many twists and turns throughout the decade, 1989 stuck the landing. 89 would be remembered for the emergence of democracy and people from all over the world demanding freedom. As communism started to crumble, people started treating it like an unsightly facial mold. Take this quarter, go downtown and have a rat gnaw that thing off your face. Today, we're going to talk about the news, culture, sports and entertainment, and all that was weird in the 80s. This is Timeline. Today, this one is so fine because it is all about 1989. But before we get started, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History channel and let us know in the comments below what story from 1989 you would like a full video on. Also, stick around until the end when we'll reveal what decade timeline we'll be covering next. Now, are you ready for one last run at the 80s? Captain, my captain. This is 1989. That's your edge. Bye, baby. Pop culture got off to a good start in January. On the 3rd, the Arsenio Hall show debuted, which would give the world some unforgettable moments. From the dressing down of Vanilla Ice. Those that tried to hold the Ice Man down can kiss my wife A double F. Yep, yep. To Magic Johnson divulging everything the day after the world found out he was HIV positive. Having an HIV virus that I want everybody to practice safe sex. And of course, Bill Clinton as a red hot sax machine. The big man! Moving on to January 7th, when Hirohito, the emperor of Japan, died. Hirohito was Japan's longest reigning emperor. He held the throne from 1926 to 1989, becoming a notable historical figure when he announced Japan's surrender to the Allied forces on August 12th, 1945. On January 20th, George Herbert Walker Bush was sworn in as the 41st President of the United States. We're going to see a lot more HW action in the 90s. Three days later on January 23rd, the Spanish surrealist Salvador Dali died at the age of 84. While his death certificate says Dali died of heart failure, the last five years of the artist's life was rife with mental illness, depression, drug addiction, and Parkinson's-like symptoms. But Dali left an impression on the art world. In February of 2011, when Dali's Portrait de Paul Loire was won at a Sotheby's auction for a jaw-dropping $22.4 million, the most expensive of Dali's paintings sold as well as the most expensive surrealist piece of art ever sold. Back to 89, Tone Loke released Loked After Dark, his debut album. The album reached number one on the Billboard 200 chart, and by spring break, you couldn't turn on MTV without hearing Funky Cold Medina. Tone's second and final album, Cool Hand Loke, sorta of tanked, but by then, his second career as an actor was just beginning. On February 4th, 1994, Tone got his first memorable role, playing the straight guy to Jim Carrey in Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. This is not the time, Mace. If I ain't wanna come down here and see me talking to you or your ass, I'm history. Back to the 89 timeline. On January 24th, Ted Bundy was executed at Florida State Prison as hundreds of people just outside the prison walls chanted, sang, danced, and shot off fireworks. I think society is always protected from me and from others like me, that's for sure. Bundy confessed to 30 homicides, but considering he was giving investigators information on new victims up until his departure, the count is almost certainly higher. Ted Bundy is dead! Moving into February, the Ayatollah Khomeini ordered all brave Muslims to kill the British Indian writer Salman Rushdie for besmirching the Prophet Muhammad and other aspects of Islam in his 1988 novel, The Satanic Verses. Yep, Rushdie was issued a fatwa. Rushdie lay low and went into hiding for a handful of years, until August 11th, 1993, when Rushdie made his first public appearance. Real devils don't wear horns. Apparently, Bono had been calling for Salman from the stage throughout U2's Zoo TV tour. When the tour reached London's Wembley Stadium, Bono called out for Rushdie, and when the writer appeared, the stadium erupted. Salman Rushdie, ladies and gentlemen, I 
One week later, on February 21st, 54 members of the 14K Triad were arrested across the US, Canada, Singapore, and Hong Kong after 820 pounds of China narcotics were seized with a reported street value of $1 billion. In the mid-80s, the Chinese-based gang, which dates from the 19th century, made up 3% of all US heroin sales. By 89, they controlled between 70 and 80% of the game. On February 23rd, Madonna's video for Like a Prayer debuted on MTV and was met with almost immediate backlash. Because of the video's controversy, Madonna lost her spokesperson gig with Pepsi, although she got to keep her $5 million fee, and Like a Prayer went on to number one on 22 charts including the Billboard Hot 100 and the UK singles. Everyone won, except Pepsi. Pepsi. Always the bridesmaid, never the bride. We go to March, where on the 15th, the Bush administration announced that there would be an indefinite ban on the import of semi-automatic assault rifles. The ban, announced by William J. Bennett, the director of national drug policy, was put into place after the U.S. Drug Enforcement Unit reported that they weren't able to keep up with the heavy artillery drug traffickers used. On March 24th, the Exxon Valdez drifted into Prince William Sound's Bly Reef just off the coast of Alaska and spilled 10.8 million gallons of crude oil into the ocean. Captain Joseph Hazelwood was reported to have been drinking hard that night and was mysteriously missing when the tanker struck the reef. Exxon blamed Hazelwood, and he countered by saying Exxon was using him as a scapegoat. Hazelwood was cleared of all charges, but despite the evidence that pointed to Exxon's fault, the Exxon Valdez disaster will always be tied to the drunken skipper. In the blink of a cosmic clock, I went from quantum physicist to Air Force test pilot. Here I am, bouncing around in time, putting things right that once went wrong, a sort of time-traveling Lone Ranger with Al as my tanto. In late March, in the main courtyard of the Louvre, the glass pyramid made its official debut to, how do you say, mixed results. Local Parisians hated the design of American architect I.M. Pei, saying it sullied the French Renaissance aesthetic of the Louvre. But just like they got over their hatred for the Eiffel Tower in March of 1889, yeah, they hated that too, Parisians eventually came to accept Pei's pyramids. And if you're a conspiracy enthusiast or a fan of the Da Vinci Code, you're familiar with the story of how the Big Pyramid is built with 666 glass panes. But that is a weird history for another time. Moving into early April, 19-year-old Seattle Mariner rookie Ken Griffey Jr. made his official Major League Baseball debut against the Oakland A's on opening day. The center fielder hit a double in his first Major League at bat. The kid would go on to homer in his first home game swing at the Kingdome in Seattle seven days later. We'll see much more of Jr. in the 90s. Speaking of baseball... Wild thing delivers! Yeah. Yeah. Get about the curveball, Ricky. Give him a heater. One last baseball story. On April 8th, Jim Abbott, a pitcher who only had one hand, made his Major League Baseball debut on April 8th when he faced the Seattle Mariners at Angel Stadium. Abbott got racked in his first game in the bigs, giving up six runs and a 7-0 loss. But Angels fans still gave him a standing ovation as he was pulled from the game in the fifth inning. Flash forward to September 4th, 1993, when he was pitching for the Yankees and threw a no-hitter. He did it! He did it! No-hitter for Jim Abbott! Staying with sports, on April 15th, 96 people died and another 766 sustained serious injuries during an FA Cup semifinal between Liverpool and Nottingham Forest. With a match already in play, an estimated 5,000 supporters rushed to enter Hillsborough Stadium at once, most filling the sections directly behind the West Goal. Then the crush began. Following the disaster, officials lied to the media, stating that the entire incident was due to football hooligans and widespread drunkenness by Liverpool supporters. The Taylor Report found that the main cause of the disaster was due to the South Yorkshire Police Department's failure to control the crowd. Four days later on the 19th, Tricia Miley was found late at night in critical condition after being assaulted and left for dead in Central Park. Local detectives illegally interrogated dozens of suspects and then chose five, Kevin Richardson, Anton McRae, Raymond Santana, Corey Wise, and Youssef Salam, who came to be known as the Central Park Five. Real estate developer Donald J. Trump took out full-page ads in New York City asking for the death penalty. Of course I hate these people, and let's all hate these people, because maybe hate is what we need if we're gonna get something done. Despite a lack of physical evidence, the members of the Central Park Five received five to 15 years in prison. Flash forward when Matthias Reyes confessed to the Central Park attack. 
to the Iraq and then flash forward again to 2014, when the Central Park Five won a $41 million settlement after suing the city of New York for malicious prosecution, racial discrimination, and emotional distress. Now, it feels great to have a voice, because in 89, we didn't have one. We go to the Caribbean Sea, where a 16-inch gun turret of the United States Navy battleship USS Iowa exploded while on maneuvers, killing 47 American sailors. An initial investigation by the U.S. Navy was leaked, and reported that crew member Clayton Hartwig deliberately caused the explosion after his sexual relationship with fellow crew member Kendall Truitt suddenly ended. However, the families of the victims and members of Congress questioned the findings of the Navy. A second investigation by the U.S. Senate and the U.S. House Armed Services Committees both found that an accidental overram of the powder bags in the turret most likely was the cause of the explosion. Five days later, on April 24th, Tom Petty released Full Moon Fever, his first solo album since he formed the Heartbreakers in 1976. It wasn't completely a solo LP, though. Petty got contributions from the Heartbreakers' Mike Campbell, as well as ELO's Jeff Lynne, Beatles' George Harrison, as well as Roy Orbison. Petty's debut eventually went five times platinum, thanks to the five incredibly successful singles, I Won't Back Down, Running Down a Dream, and of course, Free Fallen which he performed at the MTV Music Video Awards in 1989 with Axl Rose. In late April, Sergio Leone, the Italian film director who was credited as the creator of the Spaghetti Western, died from a heart attack at the age of 60. Leone's Dollars trilogy, featuring Clint Eastwood in A Fistful of Dollars, For a Few Dollars More, and The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, are enough to designate him as one of the greatest and most influential directors in the history of cinema. Entering May, Michael Jordan made The Shot, which happened during Game 5 of the Eastern Conference First Round Series at Richfield Coliseum in Ohio. Down by one point with three seconds left on the clock, Jordan got the ball and... Jordan with two seconds to go, puts it up and scores at the buzzer! Michael Jordan has won it for Chicago! An iconic NBA moment. How did MJ do it? Money's gotta be the shoes! In what will become a theme for the next few years, Dan Quayle made one of his earliest gaffes as the Vice President of the United States when he gave a speech at a United Negro College Fund conference, and these words stumbled out of his mouth. And you take the UNCF model that what a waste it is to lose one's mind or not to have a mind is being very wasteful. Quayle was referring to the United Negro College Fund's tagline, A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Hey, that was Marlon Wayans. Hang tight, you'll see a lot more of Quail saying silly stuff soon. Right boot. Sorry, we're closed. Well, then what are all these people doing here? Drinking and having a good time. Well, that's why we're here. Yeah. You're too stupid to have a good time. It would be on May 22nd when O.J. Simpson pleaded no contest and submitted the plea to one count of spousal battery to charges that he beat his wife Nicole Brown at their Brentwood home. The 90s and O.J., we will definitely see you again. On June 4th, Poland held its first party-free election under communist rule in over 40 years, allowing the Solidarity Trade Union to defeat the Communist Party at the polls. The result of this election began the collapse of communism and the early stages of political change not only in Poland, but across Central and Eastern Europe. The following day, on June 5th, this unidentified Chinese man stood in front of a convoy of Type 59 tanks attempting to leave Tiananmen Square the day after the Chinese military had suppressed the area's protests by force. To this day, little is known of Tank Man. Bruce Hershenson, the former deputy special assistant to President Nixon, alleged that the unidentified man was executed 14 days after the incident, while others claimed he was killed by firing squad several months later in the year. In mid-June, actor and socialite Zsa, Zsa Gabor took her $215,000 Rolls-Royce out for a spin and ended up getting pulled over by a Beverly Hills motorcycle cop for expired car registration tags. While Officer Paul Kramer was looking for additional violations, Gabor drove off. When Kramer chased her down and pulled her over for the second time, Gabor Zsa, Zsa the officer's face, stating she was acting in self-defense after he yanked her out of her car. 
Ultimately, Zsa Zsa was ordered to serve three days in jail. She had to pay every fine and retribution totaling $12,937, and she had to perform 120 hours of community service. They can take away my husband, they can take away my driver's license, but darling, don't touch my wheel. Don't touch my wheel. Three days later, on June 21st, in a 5-4 decision, the Supreme Court ruled in favor of the landmark decision stating that burning the American flag as a political protest was protected by the First Amendment. The ruling came after the Texas v. Johnson Supreme Court case, where Joey Johnson, then a member in the Revolutionary Communist Youth Brigade, set an American flag on fire at a political demonstration during the 1984 Republican National Convention, the swing vote provided by Judge Antonin Scalia. Although Scalia voted in favor of Johnson's free speech, the judge was often heard grumbling about the case. More than once, Scalia mentioned that if he were king, he'd imprison anyone who desecrated the American flag and called Johnson a bearded weirdo. Don't kill me, man! Don't kill me! Don't kill me, man! I'm not going to kill you. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about me. What are you? I'm Batman. In a second landmark court case in less than a week, the United States Supreme Court ruled on June 26 that, based on the Stanford versus Kentucky case, upheld the possibility of the death penalty for teens who were at least 16 years old at the time of their crime. Since the Supreme Court's 1989 decision, 19 teenagers have been executed. The majority of those have been 17, most are from the South, most die by lethal injection, and all are male. See, now to me, that button's in the worst possible spot. The second button literally makes or breaks the shirt. Look at it. It's too high. It's in no man's land. You look like you live with your mother. Are you through? July 10th, Mel Blanc, the man of a thousand voices, died at 81. According to Blanc, he began smoking at nine years old, continuing his pack-a-day habit until he was diagnosed with emphysema at 77. Mel was the voice of so many iconic cartoon characters, from Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, to Porky Pig, Barney Rubble, and Speedy Gonzalez. We go to the sky, where Captain Al Haynes, pilot of United Airlines Flight 232, was cruising at an altitude of 37,000 feet over Iowa when the tail-mounted engine on his DC-10 disintegrated, forcing a crash landing in Sioux City. With very limited ability to control the plane, Haynes landed the large three-engine airliner, carrying 292 passengers and crew. While 111 people on board perished in the disaster, Captain Haynes and his crew were heralded as heroes. But to Haynes, it was just another day on the job. There is no hero. There is just a group of four people who did their job. At the end of July, Game Boy would make its American debut and take handheld gaming to an entirely different level. But it wasn't always like that. The unit wasn't very popular in its early stages. Some Nintendo developers even called it Dame Game with the word dame being Japanese for hopeless or lame. But Americans love their Game Boys. They bought 40,000 units on the first day alone. With the Cold War coming to a close, the world's biggest heavy metal artists decided to band together to perform at the Moscow Music Peace Festival, which took place over the weekend beginning on August 12th. Some of the era's best hair bands performed that weekend, promoting world peace and established international cooperation in fighting the drug war in Russia. Ironic, considering the bill featured Skid Row, Motley Crue, Ozzy, and the Scorpions, bands who never really listen when asked to just say no. On August 20th, Lyle and Eric Menendez murdered their parents in cold blood in the family's Beverly Hills mansion. After spending an estimated $700,000 of their deceased father's fortune on Porsches, Rolexes, and restaurants, one of them bought a restaurant, detectives arrested the brothers off of a tip from Lyle's psychologist's mistress. Fast forward to July 2nd, 1996, when the brothers Menendez were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole after a lengthy trial televised on court TV. Does she always smell that good? Kelly? Kapowski? Hey, you don't want anything to do with her. But why not? She's, uh, she has leprosy. <laughs> On August 24th, Pete Rose accepted a lifetime ban from Major League Baseball, handed down by the new commissioner of baseball, A. Bartlett Giamatti. 
The Cincinnati Reds manager was charged with betting on Major League Baseball games, which started in 1985, and at least 52 of his own team's games in 1987, dropping up to $10,000 a day on his wagers. Giamatti's ban rendered all of Charlie Hustle's on-field accomplishments as null and void. More on Commissioner Giamatti in a minute. Leona Helmsley, the billionaire hotelier and shady real estate investor, was convicted of federal income tax evasion on August 30th. She was being sued by a group of contractors for refusing to pay services rendered to her 21-room mansion in Greenwich, Connecticut. Her former housekeeper testified that she once heard Helmsley scream, we don't pay taxes, only the little people pay taxes. Also known as the Queen of Mean, Helmsley got off light. Helmsley only served 19 months of a 16-year prison sentence and an additional two under house arrest. Seven days after he banned Pete Rose from Major League Baseball, Commissioner A. Bartlett Giamatti died of a heart attack at his summer home in Martha's Vineyard. He was 51. Giamatti had only been the MLB's commissioner for five months, but he would appear again in a most unlikely place. Flash forward to October 22, 2004, when the film Sideways debuted. Bartlett's real son, Paul, playing Miles, used a real photograph of father and son Giamatti, which you can see here on his mother's dresser. Hmm, sideways, that was a pretty good movie. Back to 1989, where on September 6th, Madonna performed Express Yourself at the MTV Video Music Awards. Madonna's choreography for Express Yourself is absolutely charming, compared to what pop stars do on stage today to get noticed. But in 1989, a woman grabbing herself, dry humping the microphone stand, and wearing a black lace bustier over men's baggy trousers was all it took to throw conservative groups like the PMRC and Parents Television Council into a tailspin. If Kathy learned anything from the earlier two contenders' experiences. She might feel a little more comfortable on ice skates. On September 10th, Barry Sanders played his first NFL game as a Detroit Lion, rushing for a respectable 71 yards and a touchdown against the Phoenix Cardinals. The former Heisman Trophy winner made it to the Pro Bowl every season he played. He rushed for 15,269 yards, becoming one of the greatest running backs ever. And he made impossible moves like this. Look routine. Sanders. In the 49 territory. With the central Barry Sanders. Inside the 20, inside the 10. Highlight film style. Quit eyeballing your dog. Because on September 18th, California Governor George Duke Magian signed a bill making it illegal in the Golden State to eat household pets, specifically, but not limited to, dogs and cats. Makes sense, but man, slow roasted Charlie? Mm mm mm. That's a good dog. All right. You're okay. All right. It's a, it's a little boy. It's a little baby boy. At the beginning of October, Denmark became the first country in the world to legally recognize same-sex marriages in the form of registered partnerships. Not bad, considering the country viewed homosexuality as an illness up to 1981. Another first took place on October 3rd, when Art Schell became the first black man to be hired as an NFL head coach. Schell, a former offensive tackle with the Raiders from 1968 to 1982, returned to the team as the head coach until the 1994 season, only to return in 2006. On October 9th, TASS, the Soviet Union's central news agency, confirmed that a UFO had landed in a park in the city of Veronezh, approximately 300 miles southeast of Moscow. The TASS report noted the spacecraft contained three creatures, similar to humans, and a small robot, which all exited the UFO and explored the grounds. The report also noted their height, between 9 and 12 feet tall, and the size of their heads, very small, and their eyes, three of them. The report failed to report the date of the Veronezh alien visit, but 40 or so Soviet witnesses, adults and children, were consumed with fear that lasted for several days. In mid-October, Wayne Gretzky, the great one, passed Gordie Howe's scoring record of 1,850 goals in a game against the team that traded him, the Edmonton Oilers at Edmonton. Gretzky's 1,000 and the fact that his former hometown fans got to be there for it was a nice touch by the hockey gods.
Staying with sports, we go to Game 3 of the Bay Bridge World Series between the Oakland A's and the San Francisco Giants, which was interrupted by a 6.9 earthquake. Second base, so the Oakland A's take... Take... I'll tell you what, we're having an earthquake. The quake killed 67 people and caused more than $5 billion in damages. But experts stated that potentially thousands of lives were saved because most Bay Area residents were inside, getting ready to watch the game. We flash forward to October 27th, when play resumed when the Athletics beat the Giants 13-7, eventually sweeping San Francisco in four games the following day on October 28th. Later in the month, as part of their plant's opening celebration in Orville, Ohio, Smith Dairy made and served the world's largest milkshake on record. The 1,575.2 gallon shake earned Smith Dairy a spot in that year's edition of Guinness Book of World Records. Heading into November, on the 9th, the Berlin Wall came down. The Berlin Wall had divided East and West Berlin since 1961. The event marked the fall of the Iron Curtain and hinted at the eventual fall of communism in Eastern and Central Europe. In related news, an eventual end of the dying Cold War was declared at the Malta summit three weeks later. But of course, one of the most memorable moments of the Wall's fall, and to be honest, all of the 80s, was David Hasselhoff rocking the hell out of his single Looking for Freedom in a piano scarf and electric black leather jacket. I've been looking for freedom. I've been looking the world was going through some massive changes in November. On the 17th, the Velvet Revolution began in Czechoslovakia, as thousands of student protesters filled the streets of Prague, peacefully demanding freedom from their country's communist government. In the following days, these students were joined by other Czech citizens, and three days later, on November 20th, over half a million Czechs and Slovaks filled Prague's streets and took over Wenceslas Square, demanding an end to communism. The peaceful protests, which lasted until December 29th, worked. Czechoslovakia's communists were forced out of power, and during the final days of 1989, the Czechs elected Václav Havel, their first president since 1948. Staying with the then-communist nations, on November 24th, Romanian leader Nicolae Ceausescu was unanimously re-elected Communist Party chief. It didn't last for long, because a month later to Christmas, December 25th, when Nicolae Ceausescu and his wife Elena were charged with genocide during the revolution in Timisoara. Ceausescu was found guilty, and he and his wife were swiftly escorted to an outdoor wall. Before news crews or reporters could record the execution, the firing squad fired, thus officially ending Romania's reign of communism. Well, that was fast. You girls just stay here and relax. Remember, Dad, the handle of the Big Dipper points to the North Star. <laughs> That's nice, Lisa, but we're not in astronomy class. We're in the woods. <laughs> we said there would be more quail. On December 19th, the vice president mailed out a batch of 30,000 Christmas cards, and in true Dan Quail fashion, the holiday greeting inside the card included a fairly glaring typo. Quail wrote, May our nation continue to be the beacon of hope in the world, but somewhere between his mouth and the printer's, beacon was spelled with a K, B-E-A, K-O-N. Quayle shifted blame onto his wife, Marilyn. What a guy. Who in turn blamed Denise Balzano, Mrs. Quayle's chief of staff. The following day on the 20th, the United States invasion of Panama. During the month-long invasion, the Panamanian dictator Manuel Noriega fled to a Catholic sovereign entity, staying there for 10 days, while American soldiers blared tunes from ACDC, The Clash, and Guns N' Roses around the clock. And speaking of music, on December 23rd, 17-year-old Ice Cube left NWA, the band he co-founded with Easy e and Dr. Dre after getting iced out by Jerry Heller, the rap group's manager over royalties. But Cube had a legitimate reason for breaking away and going solo. He wrote the majority of NWA's debut, Straight Outta Compton, and all of Easy's Easy Does It for combined sales of over 5 million albums. Ice Cube earned a total of $32,000 for all of those sales. Flash forward to May 16, 1990, when Ice Cube released America's Most Wanted. Most assumed Cube's debut would bomb, but it was universally praised by critics. It immediately went platinum, and it set up a rap rivalry between N.W.A. and Cube, which produced some of the greatest rap beef tracks in the history of hip-hop. 
And with that, Ice Cube would be the last story of the 80s. The 80s. It was a beautiful time, and we hope you enjoy this trip down memory lane. Be sure to watch or rewatch all of our Timeline 80s videos from 1980 through 1989. But we know why you're still here. What decade will Timeline do next? The 90s, 70s, 50s? Well, we've seen plenty of comments and even did a poll. We're going to take a break in between decades, but in the not so distant future, season two of Timeline will be the 90s. But before that, we will be doing a special edition of Timeline. That is, if we make it. Coming soon, Timeline 2020. Boom, we will see you soon. So what do you think? What was your favorite story from Timeline the 80s? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these only about the 1980s videos of our weird history.